epoxy resin. Really fun to use. Some people loathe it, whatever. It's okay to have bad taste. You can do really cool things. It's awesome for stabilizing projects. Once you get into like the pigments and adding it to multimedia stuff, you can make like beautiful cutting boards and river tables and coasters and art and all kinds of cool stuff. It, it's not the, you know, le what, what's, mm. Start over. Highly encourage anyone who wants to mess with resin to give it a go. It, it, it can be an investment, but it's so fun and rewarding and satisfying to pull something out of a mold and you just do really cool, interesting things with it. And it's not that hard to get good results, but there are a few things you need to follow to make sure you don't uh, inadvertently mess up your project and ruin your investment. So we're gonna go over those today. I'm Kalo Harris with You Can Make This Too. Thank you for joining me. Of course, I am sponsored by Total Boat. So we're working with all Total Boat products today. That's what we'll be talking about. The first thing up, using the wrong epoxy for your project. Now I have a very in-depth video where I go super in the weeds on the right epoxies to use. You're gonna keep this really quick. The, the basic things is like, look at the name of the product you're using and the application. If that fits your application, you're good. If it doesn't, then stay away from it. Maker epoxy is, made for doing art resin stuff is very similar to like a bar top epoxy and, and the idea that it's meant to be poured very thin and cured quickly and it's a top coat so remember that the high performance resin here i have this cool dispenser it's really made to be used like a glue almost so for i'm just gluing things together or doing small gap and void fillings fine for that then we have Thick set fathom, there's also a thick set. Thick set's good for up to about a half inch pour. Thick set fathom, you can do up to a two inch pour. And with the fathom, I wanna say there's a one and a half gallon minimum mixing. So if you have less than that in volume, it might not cure properly. Epoxy resin cures through an exothermogenic, exogenic, ex, exother, exothermic process where it creates and releases heat. That's an important part of its curing. If the environment's too cold, it's gonna struggle. And also, if you're pouring the wrong dimensions, that can be a problem. For example, if I take epoxy meant to be poured really thin and I pour it really thick, it's gonna make way too much heat. It's gonna screw up the chemical process. It's gonna smoke, release a whole bunch of nasty fumes and just turn into hot garbage. Likewise, if I take an epoxy resin meant to be poured really thick and I pour it really thin, it'll take forever to cure if it ever does because it might not have the mass needed to generate the heat needed to go through it curing process and a lot of times it comes down to application thickness so if you're not sure which product to use just think about well how thick is this going to be then find the product that works in that range from where you can always build layers so for example if i'm doing something like four inches thick i could still use fathom i just know it'll take me two pours or say i'm doing an inch and maybe i can't get the volume for fathom i could use thick set that goes up to half inch i just have to do two lifts no big deal. So yeah, make sure you're using the right product and that you're pouring it or laying it, whatever, at the proper thickness, which would kind of be the second tip is whatever you're using, use it at the right thickness. You wanna come get a close up? Most common mistake, I'm gonna use this stuff just because it's really convenient. Comes down to your mixing and that is not mixing thoroughly. And a pro tip here, if you're gonna add pigment or color, Add it after you mix it. Let's get in close here and hopefully you can see this. There's some lines and striations in there. As I mix this, it's gonna get really streaky. And you wanna mix this, if you're mixing by hand, for three to five minutes, so about the length of a song. Really what you wanna do is make sure everything's fully in or homogenized. And you know that's happened when all this cloudiness and streakiness goes away. If I add my colors ahead of time before I've thoroughly mixed, I can't see this cloudy streakiness and not realize that it's not thoroughly mixed. So add, the, add your colors after you mix. Also with mixing, you'll notice that I'm stirring it pretty slow and even still there's some air bubbles getting whipped into this. When you're mixing epoxy, you don't wanna just whip it because probably you don't want a whole bunch of air bubbles in it. If you're using a power drill, you wanna make sure you're doing that with larger volumes where your mixing paddle can stay fully submerged and you just wanna run that drill at a nice slow speed. You'll also notice that while I'm scraping, I'm making sure to, you know, turning at the edges and I'm making sure to get all of the bottom, not just the middle of the bottom. Like I said, mix thoroughly because the curing process for epoxy is a chemical reaction. We have two components, right? The resin and then the hardener. For all of the resin to harden, it needs to be fully incorporated 
with the hardener. And if we don't bring those together through stirring, then there will be pockets of resin you pour that don't have any hardener compounds close enough to cause them to harden and you'll just have these soft spots in your project and there's nothing you can do. You just have to find a way to scrape all that out without ruining your project and then do it again and blend it in and that is a very, uh, very tragic thing to have to do. So try not to put yourself in that position. Mix thoroughly. The other part to mixing properly is your ratio. You have to get your resin and hardener all fully incorporated, but there has to be the appropriate ratio of resin to hardener, not enough, and it's not gonna work too much. And well, your hardener just makes the resin harden. It's not hard on itself. So if you have too much hardener, uh, it's not gonna harden quick or anything. It's just gonna be soft because you have a whole bunch of something that, you know, doesn't have the meat. That's why I like using this dispenser for this high performance two to one because it's what we call a metered pump. So it releases the proper ratio with each pump. Otherwise, you know, this is a one to one epoxy. This is a two to one. Plain thick set is a three to one. The high performance is a two to one. And what that means is you need two parts of resin for one part hardener or three parts of resin to one part hardener or one part resin to one part hardener. Total Boat and oh, other brands also, they have these cool mixing cups that have all the ratios laid out so you can measure up to a one and then a one and you have the perfect or four and four and you have the perfect ratio. Of course, this is bot would be doing ratios by volume. Fortunately with Total Boat, um, you can run the ratios by volume or weight. The resin and the hardener are close enough in specific gravity or density that it works out when you're doing it by weight or volume. If you're messing with other brands, be aware, sometimes it might be ratio by weight, not by volume, then you need to make sure you use a scale. But also for most times with resin, you can get away either or and the ratio stays close enough, it's no big deal. So if you don't have any cups with handy measuring or a great way to measure that volume, you can always just use a scale and that'll also keep you close. Okay, this resin is nice and fully mixed. Now we talked about the volume. This is a two to one, so this is good for about an eighth inch to a quarter inch, really quarter inch. If you're in a warm environment, it's gonna kick off. I know just from experience, it's gonna get too hot. So we wanna keep this at about an eighth of an inch. Right now, I'm sitting at like three quarters of an inch in this cup. So if I just let this sit here and I, and I go too slow, this cup is gonna kick off, make a bunch of fumes and ruin this epoxy. So I need to move with it promptly. You gotta know your pot life. I'm using a medium hardener. So I know I've got several minutes to work with my pot life, but you just be aware of how long you can leave your epoxy in your cup before you pour it. I made sure to scrape the bottoms and sides, but invariably there's going to be unmixed bits of resin and hardener on the sides of this cup and in the bottom. Depending on what I'm doing, say I'm just doing a little knot filling or something, I would, probably just work out of this cup. But if I'm doing big pours with large volumes, another pro tip, mix more than you need. I'd rather have a little extra epoxy left in my cup than have to mix another batch that may or may not match great. So bear that in mind. But let's say I'm doing large volumes with bigger cups. I really, really, really wanna make sure that any unmixed bits on here do not end up in my project. So what I'll do is I'll take two cups. Cups are a lot cheaper than epoxy. And now this cup, is trash. Whatever's left in here, I cannot trust to be fully mixed. I'm not gonna scrape out whatever's left, etc. And I know what I've poured into this is clean, fully mixed epoxy. So then when I go to my project, I can absolutely scrape the sides and bottom down out of this cup and know that that is all good, viable epoxy that's going to properly cure on my project. Uh, that can be important because you're not thinking about it and maybe you didn't mix enough because you're trying to be you know, conservative and not wasteful, but then you need just a little bit more. You might be like, oh, there's enough in here and you scrape that out. Well, if I've done this, that's fine. But if I'm still working out of my mixing cup, you do that and that unmixed glob is gonna end up right in the top where it's visible, where you're gonna work and then it never cures and it's a really bad day. Best practice is, you know, use two cups, mix in one cup, don't scrape that out, pour what's good and here and now this cup is safe to work with. Pour, scrape, get every little drop, it's all good, it's fine. Might seem wasteful, but um, it's far better to waste a little bit of epoxy and maybe another cup than a project. Okay, so we've got this two to one and it's way too thick. I'm gonna leave that in this cup so I can show you what having something kick off and go go exo looks like. And in this, I've got some fast hardener with the high performance. What I'm gonna do is mix 
an improper ratio and not mix thoroughly and show you how it just won't cure. There we go. Good technique if you're using the pumps and the bottles is to do one pump, one pump, and then you don't have to worry about losing track. All right, so I've got fast hardener and high performance in here. It is definitely not two to one. Uh, I've only done some cursory stirring. It's still fairly cloudy, but this should be tack free in two hours. So we'll just pour this out so it's not too thick and come back in a few hours. Betcha you it's not hard. like button and subscribe or if you share videos you're that kind of person that enjoys doing those things thank you so much that really goes a long way to helping me continue doing this and if you're not that's okay thank you for watching this video anyway i hope you learned something or inspired or at least a little entertained until next time make time to make something